This is um, Aaron Murakami with AP Electronic Media, and um, we're going to be. This is uh, May 4th, uh, Sunday, 2017, and we're here at Alpha and Core's Secret Lab up here in beautiful British Columbia. And coming up here on July 7, 8, and 9, um, here just in about 50 days or something like that, um, Al is going to be one of the presenters at the 2017 Energy Science and Technology Conference in Hayden, Idaho. Uh, the website for that is energysciencenconference.com. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Al Francoeur, uh, a lot of his work has been online actually for quite a few years. And you've kind of laid low for several years and just kind of working on some of these projects in, 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 you know, in the privacy of your lab. And, and, uh, but you can find him on LinkedIn. And um, so here at your shop, you know, we have one of these uh, pretty famous motors sitting right, right next to you. You want to kind of... Yeah, EMA number it? one. Uh... Basically, this uh, ever since I've acquired this equipment, it's gone through. I've gone through a, a research to find out what makes it tick, and uh, it took a lot of work, and, a, and a, a lot of things have happened, which I won't discuss everything, like we were talking earlier. But what I did find out was what causes the popping coil effect, what causes the, the splitting the positive, and how it relates to the power supply and the secret to the EMA technology. Uh, which wasn't adequately uh, explained in the past from all my previous findings. But today's different. Today, uh, a whole bunch of new information came and uh, new findings were revealed. And that led, le led us to the discovery. Plus, we had some interesting things happen here that also increased the knowledge of that discovery. And uh, so we're here to bring it forward today to allow for humanity for everybody's benefit. And, and, and so a lot of your work in the last few years has focused on the Edgrey technology, and you have probably maybe the largest collection. Yeah, that I'm, that I'm aware of, yes. And if I just kind of turn this camera a little bit, we can kind of see I mean, that's, that's really some of the motors and rotors back there. Yeah. All in a, in a stage. The nylon one and the... Uh, Metal one, three rotors, and one of the rotors over there goes to the motor sitting next to you. Yep, yep. And um, so, what what years did you get these uh, gray motors? Ah, uh, let's see, it's been about twelve years. Uh, I don't remember the exact Three date. Years. And, you, um, and you and you got you can just see online. Time. You can actually see online. Uh -huh. uh, it, it's it's on there online right. on the dates when it became up available for sale when I first uh -huh. started. That this one wasn't there, but uh, those ones were right. included. The synchronous converter, the blue one. That you see there, that's a, that's also depicted on the the ZTEX video, that's on YouTube. Uh, there's probably uh, several versions of the ZTEX video, depending on which one you look at. Some of them they break up the video, but I have a, a good copy of it in my computer uh, that's complete from one end to the other, uninterrupted. Right. I'll show you guys that later, which I can't do here on the on yeah. this, you know. Now, what what is your background? Because I mean, you, you're not conventionally trained in electronics no. engineering or any of this. No, I'm an inventor. Uh, but but you've been into this for a long time. I mean, yep. back in the '80s, you 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 know, for example, met Gene Manning in Germany at one of the no, on the way to Germany. We met in Calgary on our way to Germany to the Hanover Conference uh, for yep. Hans Dieper. For Hans Dieper, and he's the one yep. who has the book Revolution. Yep. Which was, uh, I guess, pretty popular quite a while back. Yep. And a, lot, a lot of people these days in this field don't even have never heard of it. No. And uh, so, you know, back in the 80s, I mean, you were obviously interested in this. And what, what, what are some of the projects you worked on back then? Uh, the carburetor fuel system that, that I have on the internet, which I showed you earlier regarding this vaporizer vessel right here. And I won't get into explaining a lot of that right now. Otherwise, other than you can actually look it up where I show everything about it, including the parts list breakdown, uh, diagrams, uh, schematics, the whole mm -hmm. thing so the people could carry on where I left off and hopefully they make it bigger, better. <laughs> Right. with more resources than what I use. So basically, I'm, in my way, breaking the trail um, to find new discoveries with an open thinking mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so it takes a, it, how, you know, how, you, how do you look at yourself? I mean, mm -hmm. your mind, are you open to these ideas? People have to find ways to, to get excited again, to, to want, everybody's an inventor. And everybody's got to can can use their mind if they allow it. They just have to decide to. And then if they do, the, the floodgate opens for unlimited amount of creativity, so that they can make the stuff themselves. They can invent their own processes, right? Instead of just always getting it from somebody else, they can they come up with their own. And that's 
what this is about. So I do these experiments to take it as far as I can within my ability to a point that we're okay, now it's time for everybody else to do it. Everybody else, at least take it and use what I've done. And if, if they like it, go with it. If not, I hope it makes helps make what they're doing even better. And then it's a win-win. And if more people did that, I think it'd be a better result for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it would help everybody uh, uh, get excited about this field. Right. You know? Um, so, so, yeah, so, so that my hand, that's heavy. That's stainless steel. Right. It's got a few pounds in there. And so besides the uh, vaporizer, you also developed um, different variations of what yep. you call the interference generator? The interference disc generator is a device that uh, allows for the production of electrical current with the reduction of back EMF through the use of uh, a rotating magnetically balanced disc to create induction by interrupting the magnetic field in the air gap between the stationary coil and, and the, uh, the stationary magnets. It's an evolving technology. I work on a, a proof of concept principle uh, and, and it's evolving in, into um, um, concepts that can be integrated from the EMA technology into the interference disc technology, also into the permanent magnet motor technology. So the discoveries that we now know about the EMA technologies have applications for anything in the electromagnetic field. So now I'm able to take this and look at how I can make better my previous technology. That's why now I'm reinvigorated with a lot of exciting ideas because it comes in now. Now I can look at this and wait a minute. Now the problems I had in the past can be swept under the rug because now we have the means and the tools to unravel the mystery mm -hmm. of electromagnetism and to make it run. That's the way it's intended. Ambient temperatures over unique design. Um, so that's why you see my shop the way it is now and and I have and I and all the technology is still here and I'm doing everything I can to advance everything because they all have potential and I can't just drop one for the other when they're all got such great potential so I'm working to try to bring it all forward and hopefully uh, it helps everybody else that's also interested in this field right. that have a look at what we've done either support our work and support other people like us or do it themselves and, and pick up where we left off either way we want it to be a win-win for all of humanity so that everybody can uh, help change the world for the better and end the oil cartels monopoly on energy right, right? so it's a motivate, motivating uh, drive to keep me going <laughs> now the the ed gray technology yep. is definitely considered one of the holy grails in the yep. you know so-called free energy field where yep. you know one of the motors when when it was demonstrating, you know, so-called over unity performance was in the, you know, 350 times, yeah. you know, COP of like 350 or yeah. something yeah. crazy like that. And, uh, you know, no, another thing that's interesting is kind of the Northwest connection. I mean, here you are up there in the Northwest, you have this collection here, you know, John Bedini was in yeah. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and yeah. he had met Ed Gray back then and, yeah. and had released his notes after Peter, Peter Lindemann, who happens to live in the Spokane area, who wrote the I book. Uh, on that and Bedini shortly released his notes afterwards yep. and uh, there was the Crosby Institute yep. uh, which uh, was he started by being Crosby as a think tank to solve yep. a lot of military problems and stuff yep. back in the war being Crosby from Spokane you know one of the theaters is called that the, amazing the Crosby you know the the, the being is, so it's all in is, our neck of woods yeah it's all there right in this the Spokane area up yep. here and, and right here in the BC you know just right over the border and uh, so it's like you know what's up with that <laughs> Uh, well, uh, people just um, happen to, uh, synchronicity, like-minded, happen yeah. to work in or interested in the same field, happen to yeah. maybe like the same kind of country. Yeah. Trees, <laughs> forests, that helps them inspire yeah. their creativity. So they get out in the country, they want yeah. to see the fresh air, the beautiful country. And I think when you do that and get away from the constant bombardment of programming from mainstream TV and radio. You gotta be able to unlock that matrix so that it get back to sometimes go to the forest and take a walk through the trees and allow mother nature to bring all that information into your mind and it all will come for the person who, who, who opens their mind to the, to the all that is. And the, and the information will dump in your head and, and from there on you do what you wish. You wanna make something good out of it or not. It all depends on the individual. In my case, I never quit. I've got a burning desire to see this through and I haven't stopped right. my entire life. And so now it's, uh, we've got some good progress and, and I've got some very fascinating findings, which no doubt is a, is a link to solving the EMA mystery right. that's been carried on since the 1958. 
right yeah and having that as, as far as i know that's the year if it went yeah. on earlier than that then let's talk to tesla right because he's the originator of the concepts right well, from there well having that burning desire is definitely one of the keys and yep. uh you know unfortunately not enough people have that 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 kind of fire in the belly and you're definitely yep. extremely passionate about oh. what you're doing i mean this drives you right i mean yep. it's and um you know but even with the northwest here i mean these motors and, and some of this gray stuff was um uh Norman Wutan had this, yep. right? And yep. he and he's down in the Dallas Fort Worth area yep. in Texas, I think. Yep. 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 But somehow, you know, it kind of gravitated up here. Yes, anyway, after so. that point, um, I became aware that they became available. Now, mm -hmm. I understand that they looked through them all and they couldn't find anything, uh, you know, that Unusual, was obvious to them. Whatever, well, that's yeah. fair enough. That's, yeah. you know what, and, and, and I don't knock anybody for that. That's just how it happens. Sometimes yeah. somebody can recognize, some people don't. It's uh, all I know is that maybe it falls into somebody else's hands and he sees something that somebody else overlooked and maybe I think that's what happened here. And so when it came into my hands, well, I was aware of these concepts actually before. So when I first saw them, something went in my head and I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to make a move. I knew it was the right answer. Something was there. So it happened. I got it. I did what I had to do to, to buy them. So we got them up here, and from there on, the research gravitated and evolved um, year after year, in spite of the, the negativity I was receiving, because I was getting a lot of it when I had my earlier groups. So I, in fact, it's one of the reasons why I closed them all, and just to, to get rid of the negativity and, and filter it out and then give, my time, give myself time and have a break and think my way through this for a few years. You see what I mean? And, and see what happens on the outcome. Now I've come to the point that we're... Uh, basically, it's like the secret to the EMA system, which I'll talk to more about at the conference. But in a nutshell, the systems, we have to redesign the coils. There's a misconception in, in the model of magnetism. When we understand how magnetism truly behaves in a permanent magnet, it'll help everybody solve the problem. And, 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 and that secret was hidden in the EMA system for decades. And when I look at the historical documents on the, the Z-Tex video, all the writings, and it's clearly shown that what I discover now has never been described other than describe it as a popping coil, split the positive, to use vague language to describe concepts that I have now rediscovered today to describe exactly what causes, what those effects are and how they relate to the system. And that's what's good, what we'll do at the conference. Yeah, so this is going to be some of the primary um, subject material of your presentation. Yeah, I could yeah. go through that. And, and uh, so it helps people get an idea of, of, of the X vertex, the electromagnetic reflectivity or mirror symmetry and how it relates to the EMA system, the power supply, and how the motors were really intended to be wound uh, as standing wave pulse motors. So what we have now, when they rewound these machines, technology in the 80s, all that's got to be redone and rewound and go back to the way it was intended earlier. So it represents a true helix inside the, uh, the, the primary, or I should say the rotor and the stator windings. Uh, so that's where we're going to evolve with this technology, back to its original intent. There we go. <laughs> right. um, is there anything else you want to share with anybody about... Um any of your work or just that well um, I think at the conference I don't I'm not sure how much you guys want me to talk about my earlier technology I'll probably do mm -hmm. a bit of a brief I'll show a couple of shots during the introduction stage some, some of the history of just the, a little the, bit of but I, it, it won't be focused on that that's just to show people that they'll be able to get some photographic and a little bit yeah. of description uh, during the introduction stage so they can see some of the work that I've part done in the past right. and if they want to know more about that they can go look online and get the more details on the interference disc machine or the permanent magnet dynamo but I probably end up having to reload with the update information because the stuff I have up there in the past it's some of it's getting broken up web pages change some clothes here it probably needs an update from there on so um, but when that update comes, it'll probably come with a whole new set of data information as we rewind this whole coil transformer configuration to, co to collaborate with the law of singularity. I call it the law of singularity because I think, I think that's what's going to happen when this physics comes through and, and, and they finally recognize what is being said here and what the discovery means and how, how, how to relate, it's going to relate to changing the viewpoint on the electromagnetic phenomena. It's going to cause a lot of exciting people around the world and that's what the power of, of this of this knowledge has when it comes out to help everybody 
with their technologies because it's it, you know, the applications will help everybody in this field and it'll help them explain what they got it'll help them design new machines based on understanding the, the concepts of what makes this work and I think looking at mirror image symmetry like optical mirror image symmetry is related to electromagnetic mirror image symmetry that's going to help unravel that mystery understanding that a true magnetic field is in the shape of a helix and, and I'll be able to demonstrate that in the presentation by taking you on a trip into outer space and that trip into outer space is going to take you to the cosmos, it's going to take you to the, to the spiral nebulas, it's going to take you to the, the cloud nebulas, a galactic formation, and bring it back down to Earth, and we're going to integrate it, show it how it integrates with the EMA technology, and uh, winding coils and transformers to make them better than what's out there in the conventional world, if you will. So when, um, you know, the audience, and eventually when the presentation is released, and people are able to, to get the presentation online, and they can get this at, um, out of that, are there any kind of um, simple experiments you might be able to suggest or recommend to people where like the average I think they're gonna yes I the think they're gonna be able to pull that or? up they're gonna be able to pull that out of it when, when they're gonna see what I describe in the in the power supply they're gonna get that they're gonna start to be able to visualize the kind of experiments I won't be able to tell them specifically they're gonna get it because when I explain to them what the splitting deposit is and 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 the poppy coil experiment is and how it relates to the helical coil formation right away once they get the light bulbs are going to start going on the off in their head they're going to be able to be a computer creative machine on their own this is what happened to me it's going to happen to them as well once they finally realize what's going on here and 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 how it really is and it's and i look at the what's what i see in the i'm a bit of a cosmologist astrophysicist as well and that helped me figure it out because nature is the teacher we got to pay attention to the nature nature Without it, we're not going to get it from the universities. we got to get it from all that is around us. We observe everything around us, what nature has to provide. It's telling us. we got to open up to that information and interpret it correctly. And that, that's what I do as part of my research to find in the truth. You know, they had to, Tesla knew. He knew by observing nature. Victor Schauberger knew his answer by observing nature. So we got to, nature is our teacher. So by utilizing the knowledge we get out of there, and incorporating that information into practical applications while using nature's geometry and electromagnetic technologies we can make the world turn we can move mountains with it if i can describe it like that a little more information i catch you quite a bit more will come out of the conference so i'm trying uh, i'm not trying to say everything at once here right, right. um and you're probably running into small friends there as well you know who's oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, it's gonna be a it'll be interesting i think it'll be good yeah Okay. Well, um, yeah, I really appreciate you welcoming us, you know, up to your home and into your lab and sharing some of your work with us and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the conference. Looks great to me and I'm looking forward to myself and thanks for the invite too. Thank you. Thumbs up.